Hey guys, welcome to our three-part video series on a comprehensive overview of McCall's search model. In this video, we're gonna go through a continuous time version of McCall's search model and see how that changes. And we're gonna then go and augment this continuous time version with exogenous job destruction. Let's see how that changes it. Let's go. So the McCall model in continuous time is the same story as before. However, our model differs in terms of time with the employed Bellman and unemployed Bellman are as follows. We note that we have two things here. Um, first, we have a lowercase r next to uh, our values for our employed worker and unemployed worker on the left hand side there. That's just something you do when we're talking about continuous time. Also, we substitute our discount factor, which would be in terms of periods for alpha. Now, that's true because we see in our employed Bellman that we don't have this next period sort of thing, because if it was discrete, we would go and have a added beta W omega in our employed Bellman. So this is how we go and we think about these sort of equations in continuous time. So the equilibrium condition, which defines this model is as follows, which is u is equal to w omega r, which is our reservation wage, is equal to our reservation wage all over this r, right? Which is this subjective uh, discount factor. Using this equilibrium condition and our previous Bellman with a similar procedure in the previous steps, we derive the following. So we just have this sort of equation, which goes and characterizes our uh, Bellman here. However, on the second term here, we have alpha all over R. That's the main thing. Let's now explore a variant of the McCall model, which incorporates exogenous job destruction. This changes our model in the sense that employed workers can now move to an unemployed state. So it goes in both directions. Remember our baseline model, we could not go and do this. Workers could only move from unemployed to employed, and if they're employed, they stay there forever, but they couldn't go and move back to unemployed. Note also that we are not really concerned about the reason why the job was destroyed, just that there's a rate at which employed workers enter unemployment. So this is the McCall model with exogenous job destruction, and this is what's really remarkable about McCall because we can write the whole thing uh, on one slide, really. Uh, here we have the employed Bellman and the unemployed Bellman. But in the employed Bellman, we have to read it like a story. We have our worker value of being employed is equal to the wage they take at any instantaneous period in time, plus this probability that they will go and enter uh, this unemployed value and give up their worker value. So that's how you're supposed to say it. For our unemployed Bellman, it looks uh, very similar or almost the same as if we've seen before because their story doesn't change. It's just our employed Bellman which goes and changes. From our equilibrium condition, we note that there exists a reservation wage, omega r, and that's the story with all of these equilibrium conditions such that the value of being employed is equal to the value of being unemployed, which is equal to uh, this reservation wage all over r right with this which is the subjective discount factor plus lambda here that is our uh, job destruction rate following the same procedure as we have in our first video we characterize our reservation wage as follows which is almost exact no it is pretty much exactly like we saw in our continuous time case just that in the denominator of this second term uh, we have plus lambda that's how it goes and enters. So this is the McCall model in continuous time. And we also talked about it with exogenous job destruction. In the next video, we're going to go through some graphs and some do some comparative statics. I will see you in the next video. Take care.